Alright guys, today I'm going to have a chat with you about filling up your music bag or field pack or haversack when you go to an event for a day or two. Uh, just some items that I think are worth putting in them as a, an approximation of what a soldier might have carried if they were on an operation for one or two days and they just needed to have the items on them that they have for use. This is not a exact historical representation of what soldiers had, but the soldiers would pretty much choose what items they thought were appropriate for when they went out, depending on the amount of time. So um, this should be a fairly good approximation for that, but this is also something that's realistically useful for when you're do out doing events. So um, this year I'll be mostly using my M44 bag for this. So uh, let's get rid of this useless reproduction musette bag and go over some items that I'm going to have inside this at events this year. Right guys, so let's start going through what I have. Now this is an approximation of what a soldier might decide they need if they are going out and they knew they are going out for a one or two day. This isn't a big marching pack, you don't need five million pairs of socks in this. This is just, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to be out for 24 hours, 48 hours. I need to have some stuff in me to make sure I've had some food, had some drink, and I've just got any little things I might need in an emergency. Just little bits like that. So let's make a start. We'll cover food first. So in terms of eating, I keep with me a mess tin, obvious reasons why you'd want that, an old Zippo lighter, and that is for use with one of the German Esbit stoves. You see this one I haven't actually used yet, but I thought I'd use this rather than my really burnt out one for the video. This also has some matches inside it and some fuel for itself. So what you've got here is the capacity to have something to eat on and something to heat things up with. Now personally my Esbit stove is mostly used for making cups of tea using the canteen, uh, using the canteen cup on top of it or for heating up tins of things like tins of beans and stuff like that because that's always good at events if you've got some tins of food that you've took all the wrapping off so it doesn't look like obviously modern stuff and you get yourself one of the little period can openers sit and open that up that's the sort of thing you can do at events that the public often are a fan of. And now I've just got a knife, or fork I should say, and a knife in their little sheaves. So that's everything that you would need to make yourself some food whilst you're at an event. And keep in mind you don't, you don't need to take a whole kitchen, plenty of stuff there. And then in terms of storing the food I've got a little reproduction coffee tin. I don't actually drink coffee, so mine's used to hold um, powdered milk in, so I can make a cup of tea. So I have one of them. And then I have three of these little reproduction ration uh, boxes. Obviously they would have had rations with them. I keep one of them just for holding the tea bags from a drink, which I know probably sounds stupid, but there you go. At least it looks a little bit better than just having a packet of PG tips or whatever in there. And the other two, what I do is I get some biscuits and like shortcakes, stuff like that. I cut them up to fit in these, wrap them up, so at events you can get your box, open it up like you're just grabbing a bite from one of your little rations. It just looks a little bit more authentic than sitting there and eating a packet of Walker's Crisps or whatever. Again, this isn't meant to be an exact, this is what the ration kit had in it. It's just use the box, at least it looks right, and you're pulling something that out of it that is at least remotely believable that they could get hold of, some crackers or whatever. So if you have the two boxes full of them, that's normally enough to keep you going for a day or two. So that's basically your food covered, except I always I also take a little extra soap tin and that's for sugar cubes. So that's my little luxury item is my extra soap tin. So now you've got stuff to store your food and you've got the stuff to prepare and eat your food. We'll put that to the side. Another item I have to carry because I've got four eyes is my little period glasses case. I often take my glasses off when I'm at events um, just to rest my eyes because they're rubbish but also to look a bit more authentic especially for doing airborne which I'm trying to get away from. I, well, I, I do the armoured division more but if you're doing airborne, take your glasses off as much as you can because otherwise you'll get, oh, they wouldn't have been in the airborne if they had glasses on. Well, I'm blind, so I can't help it. So, glasses case. Next up, little rep reproduction GI sewing kit. This is just a cheapy thing from Soldier of Fortune. Costs about £8. 
as we all are probably unfortunately aware a lot of the reproduction clothing is not the best quality and made you get rips you get tears you get buttons fall off this has got some needles some safety pins some thread some correct buttons styles inside it so if you have any unfortunate accidents you've got this tiny little sewing kit so that's worth having and next up we're getting into the personal hygiene now this is a bit of a chunky item and I know someone's going to say, well, they would have carried all that on them just for a day or two. Well, fair enough, but it's a wash roll and you do need to have a wash. And you can slim this down. So in my wash kit here, I've got a little shaving mirror wrapped up in a flannel. Pop that back in there. Got some toothpaste and some shaving foam in reproduction containers. And I've got a razor with some blades. It's a nice razor, I haven't actually used this yet, so I need to get that out this year. And uh, undoubtedly cut my face off. Got yourself your little shaving brush. A toothbrush. This is the closest thing to what the American toothbrushes look like that I've been able to get in hold of. This is a British one from, I don't know, about the 50s. Just pop that in there. And then just the uh, soap tin which I have uh, cut a modern soap up to fit inside so I can actually clean myself. So um, there you can do all the things you need to do. Now, before anyone starts kicking off and saying you don't need to carry all that stuff, okay, yeah, fair enough. Take out the razor, the shaving foam and all that. Just keep your soap, your towel, your uh, toothbrush and your toothpaste and have it thinned down. Yeah, so that's a fair comment because when this is all rolled up with all this stuff in it, that is quite chunky. So if I fold that up now and if I can do it without messing it up for a change. When you've got it all wrapped up like that, that's a fairly chunky kit. So if you can take a few bits out of there and compress it to make it smaller, that's down to you because this is going to take up a lot of space in the bag. And yes, it's a lot of the time they wouldn't have had the luxury of having all this stuff on them. So free feel, feel free to, can, to uh, take this with you or not to. There would have been instances where they had a wash kit and obviously a lot of the time they wouldn't have had that luxury. And there you go, that's that wrapped up. So that's what I keep on me for hygiene. I take an extra flannel with me. This is for washing out the mess tin, just so that can get wiped down with some water out of my canteen cup, so that's just flannel. And then we've got the probably more important items. Spare pair of boxer shorts. A spare pair of socks. I only have one spare pair of socks, so I need to get some more, so I've got a couple on me. Obviously the soldiers try to keep spare, spare pairs of socks with them because you can't be going around in wet feet. That's going to cause you a lot of problems day after day, that's not good for you. So you've got one or two pairs of socks, I reckon. These are handy at events as well if it's wet and you haven't um, got enough protection on your rough out boots or whatever and you get wet feet, sort yourself out. I keep a pair of wool gloves with me because I freeze permanently and this is Britain so the weather is always foul. My little mechanics cap that you can wear underneath your helmet again because I'm permanently cold and that's handy when you want to not have your helmet on because you're interacting with the public and it's easy to function with this little hat on so you can have the choice and it doesn't take up much space. And I also always keep with me a blanket. Not a blanket. I can't get my words out today. A scarf. One of the tubes dark scarfs. These are really good. If you're driving around in a Jeep, you often freeze. Uh, so they'll keep you warm. But also, they provide a pad for when you're packing your bag. So if you're using a haversack, for example, firstly, I feel very sorry for you because they're horrible, horrible things. But secondly, you can lay this out like this inside your haversack and then you can get all of your other items and you can use it as a base pad similar to that so if you imagine you got that in there and then you can put your other items down the side and pack your haversack up that way so they're handy for that as well and the last item I keep with me is one of these little knives this is a reproduction of the engineer one you see that's just a very simple little flip out.
and I just keep that with me if I need to cut through a little bit of rope or anything like that. This is not meant to be a every soldier had one of these jobs. This is a, I keep this with me because sometimes it's handy. Um, so think of that what you will. So now I'm going to pack all this up into my M44 bag and I'll show you what that's like with it all in and see if that is completely overloaded or not. Should be fine. Right guys, so I've had a go at packing the bag up. This is the first time I've actually packed this up because normally I've been using a musette bag. So let's go through what I've done. In the front compartment here, you've got the three boxes for your ration to whatever food you decide to take with you and keep inside them. And also in this compartment is the mess tin and the uh, knife and fork are inside the mess tin to keep them out of the way. On this side here, you've got the little soap tin and the flannel that I use for washing. Obviously this soap tin is an extra item that I've decided to include just to hold the sugar. You could um, put that in a ration box or something if you wanted. So that's, don't take that as something that they would have had because that's something I've added. In the other side here, because you've got four compartments, a bit hard to see I know. So in there you've got the uh, sewing kit and the little knife. So that's basically the little emergencies uh, section. And then at the back of the pack here, at the bottom you've got the extra boxer shorts. You've got the wash roll you can see just in the bottom down there and the scarf tucked to the side. Now, what I'm probably going to end up doing, having doing this as an emergency exercise, instead of just then popping the socks and everything on top, what we're going to do is take the scarf out because the scarf is a massive, massive amount of space used up. So we're learning here, guys. We're learning together. Or i.e. I'm being useless and you're getting to see it. So instead of having the scarf in there, we'll get the socks. Pop them in the bottom and now we've got extra room. So I can pop my gloves in, just on top. Pop my little can in from a milk. And pop my hat in. That can go on top at the back. Like that. And that'll just stop everything from rattling around. So that's pretty good. Now, I know there's a lot of stuff in here and some people will say, you don't need to take all that, they wouldn't need to take all that. Yeah, like I say, you could thin down a few things. You could certainly cut down the wash roll, if not just take it away all completely and take nothing but a uh, toothbrush with you. Entirely valid, probably a better idea. But if you're going out at an event for a couple of days, you want to keep yourself clean. And if you're doing something where you're doing living history and you're just walking around and you've only got this with you, you're going to want your wash kit. So now it's all loaded up, I should be able to just get the flap closed in on itself. And then let's see if we can shut it up. One strap down. Two straps down. There you go. Oh, and before I forget, because I obviously have, the little side pocket here, that's where the Esbit stove is with the lighter and the, and the uh, matches and the fuel for the Esbit stove. So they all go in the little utility pouch here, as you can see. Just do the button up. And there you have it. One rather full M44 bag set up for me to go out and do events that last up to two days. So here you are. I don't think that looks overly packed. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Strap that to the top look. Obviously I'm not taking this overly seriously because um, from the start I said this isn't to be thought of as uh, this is what the GIs carried and they all had that. That isn't what we're doing here. This is a, just what I think is a good approximation of what they would have took out or if they had to go out for a day or two days. But also balanced with what you need to be able to go out and do your events. So don't, don't take this as a lecture on exactly what the GIs did and didn't carry because it's not. There's things in here that you could easily take out if you want to say they wouldn't have had this, they wouldn't have had that. This is completely up to you. It's just to give you some ideas 
of what I carry and what's a good idea if you're just starting out to carry. You want something to eat, something to eat on, something to uh, prepare hot drink with. If you want a hot drink at all, you can just go with water and then it cuts all that out. And you want some clothes and just, I think, something for emergency damage to your clothes is a really good idea. So, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. And I'll see you next time.